think this is going to be Throwback Thursday. I say I think because I'm just kind of messing around in the studio. It's actually a Sunday afternoon. I've been for a walk. I've got my kitchen cleaned up. And I thought, well, let me make a card. And um, I pulled out the Stamperia garden because walking out there today, seeing all the flowers blooming and the birds and all that stuff, I thought, oh, I want to play with that paper. So I started making a six by six card base, just a basic six by six. And I've matted it here with a very soft blush and a very soft aqua. And I'm just working on the inside of the card. I'm working with, as you can see, I've got a whole pile of scraps over here. I'm kind of picking and working from uh, before I, I want to do that before I cut open another full piece of paper. So this is actually the cover of the paper pad, but I love these little bird houses. And the back is stripy paper. So I went ahead, I had this piece. I want to show you how to make a super easy pocket. Um, this is six and a half by five and a half. And I scored it at, looks like I scored it right at four. So I'm just gonna fold this. We're gonna make a little flap, but I wanna do something a little bit different. I just wanna put my adhesive on the back side, the bottom and the top. And then we have a little pocket, which is so fun. Just like that. And I wanna go ahead and add a couple of magnets. And those of you that have seen me do this before, just, you know, bear with me, go get a cup of coffee, fast forward, do whatever. But I'm gonna put my magnet, I'm gonna put it right here. Little piece of score tape. And put it over the top. And this is just extra insurance in case that original tape uh, gives way. I'm going to peel the top off. And we're going to fold our flap over. Now see this will hold this in place. Um, and these of course will be hidden under a sentiment panel or a, you know, whatever. So that's how you add magnets to a flap. And when I get ready to cover that, I'll take that off. So down here on the bottom, again, I have more scraps. And the important thing is the height on these. The width is not such a big deal, but you want, see my, my height is exactly five and a half inches. And that you do want to be consistent with because otherwise, um, I'm gonna turn this like this because I want my words to be right side up. So put this piece down first. And then this piece that has the torn edge, I just inked up with a little gathered twigs distress ink. And we're just gonna glue this right over the top. And it gives it a really great distressed look. So this is not really a full tutorial. Like I said, I'm just kind of messing around. And um, I thought I would share some ideas with you. So there's some tips for the inside, and I'll come back and finish this. Now here's our cover. And what I've done for the cover is I distressed the edges of a six by six and a five and three quarter by five and three quarter panel. And then I've got this great stripe paper. And I'm gonna go ahead and just distress this very lightly just to keep things consistent. I'm sorry, I know that's a horrible noise. But this is a distressing tool. This is a Prima distressing tool. It's an old one, I've had it forever. Um, you can also use the blade of your scissor. Just lightly run it along the edge like that. And then ink this. This is a five and a half by five and a half square. And this is also the cover. All right, we're gonna glue this down. I was gonna machine stitch, but I don't feel like threading my sewing machine. I have bright yellow thread in there right now, and um, I just don't feel like 
taking all the thread out and re-threading. So we're just going to go with distressed edges. All right. And then I've got these little strips. And these I have cut, I want to say, to a width of five and a quarter. And again, the height does not matter. And you're just going to have to hang with me and trust me. I think this is going to be cool, but you never know. So this is going to go down here. Here's another one. And I did not distress these edges. And I know, um, are you asking where's the pocket in this card? Because y'all know me so well. All right, and this is going to go right here like this. Just like that. I think that's kind of perfect. All right, so this is the crazy idea I had. I want to make a box pocket on the front of this card, but I wanted to make it out of clear acrylic cardstock or acetate, whatever you want to call it. I buy mine. You can get them from two places. Um, we Are Memory Keepers makes a 12 by 12 pad that you can get, I think, at scrapbook.com. And Heartfelt Creations also sells it in 8.5 by 11. So I cut this, and I know this is really hard to see because it's clear. But um, I cut this to eight and a half by four because I wanted my pocket to be five and a half by two and a half. And then I scored three quarter inches on the sides and three quarter inches on the bottom. And like I said, I've never tried to do this before, but I think this is going to be cool. I'm going to cut from that outer score line to the top horizontal score and just pull this out I'm cutting carefully here because I want to have straight edges and it's a little harder to see on this clear acrylic cardstock all right so I've cut these tabs out now on the inner score, you're just going to cut straight up to the top horizontal, just like that. And then this little tab is going to come around, if we are, if we did this right, it's going to come around and it adhere on the bottom. Can, can you see that? like this. Maybe this will help. I know. Who thought it was a good idea to do a tutorial with clear acrylic <laughs> cardstock? I'm just hoping you can see. Otherwise, this uh, video is not going to do very well on my YouTube channel. So I'm using Art Institute Dries Clear Adhesive. And what I'm going to do I keep these little binder clips in my studio because they're handy. And it's going to take, that will, I mean, that will adhere. It's just going to take a little bit longer. So I'm just going to use that clip to hold it in place. I'm going to do the other tab. So see this just, it just wants to go right in there. And just make sure your corner is square. And the reason I like to use something like Dries Clear as opposed to something like Zip Dry or any of those others, um, first, Dries Clear doesn't stink. Zip Dry smells horrible. I mean, I know a lot of people just love it. And if you're a fan, forgive me for not being a fan. Um, but I, I can't stand the way it smells. And then also, this really will dry clear. Oops. Unless, of course, you separate it, um, in which case, okay, there we go. I was trying to crease those folds. I've never made a clear box pocket before, people, so this is as new to me as it is to you. This is total experiment time. But you can see this is going to sit over that, and it's going to look like a little potting bench back behind it. So I'm going to set this aside to dry, and I'll be back when it is, and we'll finish that part 
What I've done here is I've cut out, fussy cut out a window from one of the um, six by six panels. And I think we're just going to ink the edges on this. And I want this to pop up a little bit from the background. But not too much. So I think I'm going to take one of my pieces of um, cut up shipping boxes. And I'm just going to cut a piece to kind of go right in the middle like that. And I'm not going to glue that down yet because I really want to get that box pocket placed. But you can kind of see, you kind of get an idea for how that's going to look. All right. Let me mess around a little bit and I'll be back. Okay, so that dries clear just would not stay. So I ended up putting, I cleaned it off with a paper towel. I ended up putting half inch score tape there. And I've also got in this little corner on each side, a little piece of half inch score tape. I'm gonna to have to research and see what kind of adhesive would have worked better um, in my head that worked perfectly, but in real life, not quite as perfect. So I'm just gluing this down here and oops, bringing this in and gluing that down there, kind of squaring this up. So now that we've got that corner, those corners done, I'm going to come in with half inch score tape along the bottom here, just like that. And that's also going to help secure, I think. I really wanted this to end up being completely clear, but I think we'll be all right. And across the top, I put this because I've got this beautiful rose crown lace from Renee Bouquet's. And I want to center this just like, just like that and take it around the sides. And then I'm just going to trim it up like this. On each side, make sure we're straight. Okay, so that worked pretty good. Like I said, this was just a crazy Sunday afternoon idea. Probably should have just taken a nap. Probably would have been a better idea. Okay, now, do you guys take Sunday afternoon naps? I probably will before too much more time goes on. I get up so early every morning. I get up what my kids call stupid early. I'm generally up between 3 and 4 a.m. It's just a habit. All right, we are going to hope for the best here and glue this down. This is not quite straight, so I'm going to fix this. There we go. I think that's a little better. Oops. Take a ruler in here and burnish. Because score tape, unless you burnish it, it can release. It doesn't always hold the way you want it to. All right. So there's our sort of clear greenhouse pocket. And then what I did, I want to put some adhesive right here. Hold on. Just right here to hold this raw edge. 
of the lace. All right. I don't think I need to do that over here. I think we're okay. All right. So what I did was I went in and I cut out this watering can. to adhere this this is going to give it a little extra strength I just put a little scrap there Just want to run a scrap up the spout to um just to strengthen that so that it doesn't get torn. All right. And I think I'm just gonna go ahead and use score tape on that since the dries clear doesn't seem to be holding as well as I would like it to on the, this I think I can put, because it's gonna hit the lace. This is just gonna add a little extra dimension on our pocket. I want this to go just like that. Very cute. Then I also cut out these little garden pots. And we're going to put a double layer back behind them. just on the one side because the one side is going to come up over you'll see just watch this is my crazy score tape reel that the inside fell out of does that has that ever happened to you that's the first time that has ever happened to me that's so weird so I'm just putting some score tape down here on our garden pots. Double layer on what will be the left side, single layer on the right. Because these are going to kind of tuck up like that. Very cute. I think I didn't glue those. I didn't. So for those of you who are not aware, um, three weeks ago, my sweet husband had a heart attack and he's okay, he's home, he's recovering. The last three weeks have been kind of topsy-turvy, and I'm still trying to get my act together. So I find myself doing stupid things like not adding glue to, to my cardstock layers. So y'all bear with me. This is a big adjustment in my life, and we're doing fine. He's doing fine. He has, you know, he's recovering well. It's just a process. It was really scary. It was really stressful. But we prayed and God got us through it and we're moving onward and upward and all will be well. 
It's just, I find myself doing the dumbest things right now. It's kind of embarrassing. But anyway, um, y'all are friends. You'll put up with me. Anyway, I like the way that looks. So what's going to go in here is our tea party in a box. Um, and I, I'm trying to decide if I want this. I do rather like that window there. Then let's take a couple of these little scraps and let's just do one of these. These are literally just laying on the table. I'm just going to go ahead and glue this down. So look, there's my little gardening shed. Isn't that cute? I do like the way that looks. Do I make you nervous when I do this, guys, or do you like it? Let me know. I don't want to make you nervous, but this is really kind of how I craft when I'm in here all by myself. Well, I'm in here all by myself now, but you know what I mean. When nobody's watching. And I think to really grow in your confidence and your art, you do have to kind of just try crazy stuff from time to time. See if it works. If it doesn't work, it's an oh well. But if it does work, it's a, you know, it's such a cool thing to figure out a new technique or a new, I'm just gluing these edges down. And what it's going to do is it's going to give this window a slightly uh, bowed appearance. So it looks a little bit more real and a little less like flat paper. That's cool. I like that. Okay. Yeah, I like that a lot. All right, now I want to make a paper lollipop to go in the pocket. So this is a 12 inch, and it started out two and a, two inches um, wide, and then I punched it with an old Stampin' Up! Scallops punch. And what we're gonna do is we're going to score this all the way down every quarter of an inch. So there you go, it's scored every quarter of an inch. Now you can use either side, doesn't matter. But at this point, you want to make sure you have your hot glue gun plugged in and you wanna take from a scrap of whatever paper is handy. And you just wanna punch out a couple of circles. This is, a, I think, a three quarter inch punch. It doesn't really matter. Um, you're just gonna need to have that. I'm just gonna ink these. And you'll see, if you've made these before, skip ahead. If you haven't made these before, of course you can buy dies to do this, and I do have the dies, but I thought it would be nice to show you how. So you're gonna start with a mountain fold, and then you're just gonna accordion fold it all the way down the length of this paper strip, back and forth and back and forth. So now that it's all folded, just kind of squish it all together.
put adhesive on one end like that. Bring the other end around like that. And glue the two ends together. This is a really big one. I might should have uh, gone smaller, but we'll hope that this works. So now bring in your hot glue gun and put a nice puddle of hot glue down on your nonstick craft sheet. And then you're gonna hold this guy up and you're gonna push the centers together and then put them in this hot glue like that. And this is where you come in with one of those little buttons that we punched out. And when this cools, because I want to let that set, isn't that neat? So while that's sitting there, I'm just going to come in with my ink and go over the tops of these spokes like this and around the edges. But this has to cool and when it cools, I'll lift it off the craft sheet and I'll put this one on the back just to hold that center and you're kind of you know, when you put it down there, you're kind of pushing it in toward the center. It takes a little bit of practice, but once you've done it once or twice, you've got it. And then you know how to make these and you can use any decorative punch that you have in your stash to um, do the edges. And then you don't have to buy a die if you don't want to buy a die. While that's cooling, I'm going to show you the rest of the lollipop. This is a paper straw. I felt like it was a little bit long. And um, I don't care to use paper straws for drinking, but they're great for crafting. So I cut this in half and I took my Tim Holtz tiny attacher and I glued this on the back. And then I used a circle die and I just die cut a piece of paper and we're just going to glue this down. And this will help keep everything on the back in place, but it also keeps us from having that naked, so much naked chipboard on the back. And the reason I'm using this foil paper is that it was already cut, it was already in the pack. There's nothing magical or special about it. All right. So there is that. And this is cool, so I'm going to peel it up off my craft sheet. It left a little bit there, and I'm going to come in with my hot glue, put some in the center, and then put this piece over it. And that just, you know, secures the center of the rosette so that... Now, if I'd been smart... I would have done this on this side and left this side, but I put the staple, ugly staples here, so we're kind of stuck with it like this, but that's okay. All right, so now I'm gonna take my hot glue. I'm gonna put a nice batch of hot glue down here, and I'm just gonna come in with my rosette, which I did backwards. Great googly moogly. It's all right. Don't panic because this wasn't finished. It's all good. And I had die cut this circle, good thing, huh? Out of the paper pad. And we're just gonna glue It must be nap time. Glue this down like that. Then I have these Rene Bouquets. I'm not 100% sure, but I think these were pastels. But um, 
These are all covered with glitter glass. So they're really spectacular. So what I like to do is just gently bend the wings. And I'm gonna come in with my hot glue. And I'm gonna put this right here. Okay. I don't wanna cover up my words, so I'm trying to get this positioned in just the right spot. There, that works. Then we lift those wings a little. Okay, that's cute. All right, so look how cute that turns out. I'm gonna find some ribbon and tie a little ribbon and dangly things down there and maybe add a few little flowers, but that's the basics. You know how to do it, you can decorate it yourself. And I did add another one of these sparkly butterflies to our little cluster here. Now. I want to make a bookmark and so I've got these two scraps this one is two and three quarters by five and three quarters and this one is two and a half by five and a half I've actually got three scraps hold on Two and a half and I'm gonna make this one five and a half as well and you'll see why just hang with me I'm just using up my scrap shawl all right so set those two aside and now I've got this random pile of little bits and bobs and we're going to use these to make a patchwork background. This is one of my all-time favorite ways to use up random scraps. And don't worry about having them be... It's okay if they hang over the side. Straight is good, however. And I've just inked the edges. And this is a great little trick. I've noticed a lot of you have started doing this and it makes me happy because this is such a great way to use up little paper scraps that would otherwise go to waste. And you'd be amazed how much you can get out of a pile of little scraps like that. Okay, so I know this looks like a hot mess right now, but hang with me. Bring in your paper cutter. And you're just going to trim this down. I want it to end up being two and a quarter by five and a quarter. So like this piece you can keep and use again. These guys just throw, they're done. Ink around your edges. Then I stamped one of my um, Spellbinders May clear stamp of the months. I hug you with my heart every day. I just think it's that is such a sweet sentiment. And I'm going to mat this on a scrap of pink. Yeah, I have to go this way. I cropped out the corners with my crocodile 
stub punch. Just going to mat this on this paper. Get that a little thin on the one side. Okay, there we go. So this guy, and it's the stub. And now what I'm going to do is stitch this onto here. Ah, it means I have to thread my sewing machine, which I know I avoided at the beginning of this whole thing. But I think it really needs the stitching. Okay, so I just stitched around the edges here. I'm going to come in and I stitch this lace along the top. And I just use my scissors to trim out the little roses and leaves. I think they look so cute. Oops, I got a little string here. All right, now we're going to take our sentiment and it's a speckled egg. I'm just going to do one of these real quick because I don't want it to be just plain. That's perfect. It doesn't have to be crazy, just a little bit. And see, it just makes it look really neat. All right, now we can glue this down. I'm just gonna go just under the tip. Okay, right. Right. And then I save these little bits. And here's what I want to do. I want to trim around. And if you if you study it, you can see there's like places where the So now you have this little applique. And this is soft, so it's not going to hurt the pages of a book, but it dresses it up just enough to make it really special. And on this one, we've just got the one rose right here. So you can see I'm just snipping the little threads where these are joined together. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to get these leaves. And I'm going to put the leaves down first, up in this corner, like, oops, <laughs> she says. That did not want to stay, probably because that paper is slightly damp. All right. up a little bit and then our rose bud goes right on top and see how pretty that is so sweet and then when it actually goes in the book it'll slip over the page like that but now I want to cover up all this stitching on the back I'm just gonna run my adhesive But you could make a lot of these little lace bookmarks for not a whole lot of money. Because um, I've got quite a bit of this lace left from just one little piece. And um, use all those little snippets and make it go the distance. So this will also go in our pocket. Like this. And there's our lollipop. And then I'm probably going to make, 
don't know, I'll do a few more things and I'll come back and show you. But this is kind of fun. It's like an inside out pocket, the pockets on the outside of the card, which, um, I, you know, I kind of like the way this clear acrylic looks because it looks like you're looking into the pocket. I, I'm ending up really liking this, guys. All right, let me finish and I'll be back. So here's the finished product. I really have to tell you guys, this crazy idea of mine came out better than I thought it was going to. So we've got our six by six card base. Here's our lollipop. I just finished it up with this butterfly and a little flower cluster and bow. And then here's our bookmark. I love the way this turned out. It is simple and elegant and that little touch of ink on there really pulled everything together. This rose crown lace from Renee Bouquets is amazing. The flowers are also from Renee Bouquets, as are the butterflies. So then here's our little vintage spoon. I polished this one up. Look how sweet it is. It's got this really great art deco detail right here. And there's some stamping on the back. It says Palmer House. And I'm not sure it's really tiny, tiny. But anyway, it's got some writing back there. This is old. This is so cool. Then this is a little tiny portable package of honey. And our tea bag. This is how I use my scraps to dress up the tea bag. And a Biscoff cookie. And that's everything. And so this is what this looks like once all the stuff is out. Once they've eaten all the goodies, you can put photos. And this becomes a display piece with photos. You can put photos of your garden, photos of a birthday party, whatever. And then on the inside, we've got our little flap. Here's a little place to write a little something, something. I did these little turn tabs. And then in the pocket that we made, here's a little three by five gift card wallet. So you can tuck a note in there. You can tuck a gift card in there. That lives right there. And then here's the bottom. I just did a little collage, nothing fancy here. But um, the this is like an inside out card. All the things you would normally find on the inside are on the outside. And again, the collection is Stamperia Garden, one of my faves. And we made my very first clear acetate pocket, box pocket, and it turned out great. A lollipop, lace, what could be better for a friend, for a birthday, a mom, sister? Anyway, that's it, guys. That's it for me, Kathy Clement, Kathy by Design. Please like this video. It pushes me up in the YouTube ranking so more people can find my channel. And if you haven't subscribed, I would love to have you join me for another Throwback Thursday, hopefully soon. All right, guys, I'm going to go get my craft on. Bye.